All right, bang, bang. Welcome to the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Trade Zero. Dave, you love these guys. They're your trade partner. This is what you use. Yeah, so, and uh, it's going bananas right now, actually, because Coinbase, their IPO was today. I think it was at 365 or 370. It's like the biggest IPO in recent memory. You can trade, buy, do everything uh, on Trade Zero. Um, I'm not even looking at, obviously, my read sheet, but Trade Zero, who's I use since E Trade kicked me off. And I know, I think they're still giving away some buzz, right, Eddie? They got a new thing too, Mr. 305. Do you see that, Mr. No. Uh, do they know? Do of... people know which ads are coming first on this show? Uh, it's sent in the outline. So that we just don't organize the ad. The... Who, who is in charge of this show? Who's as my guy? As... Who, who, is, who would you say is the producer? Like, so when you hand me the ads, which Kareem did, and they're not in order of how they're going to be presented, who should I yell at? Well, that's probably... Probably me, I would say. Um, so what are you doing then? Well, I, I'm here remote um, in the office, and Kareem has been great with, um, at least from my vantage point, getting you what you needed. So I should have... Uh, I thought you. I thought you guys were all set. Put it. Put start putting together bullet points of things we need each show, like the ads in order. TradeZero.us slash Dave. Five months pro trading practice uh, package for free. Ten dollars sliced pizza gift card. Nice. Initial uh, account is twenty five hundred. Don't just trade. Trade zero. And in honor of me moving eventually to Miami, new Mister Three Hundred Five. Trade Zero will now be giving users three hundred and five dollars worth of sign up bonuses. So that's nice. Um, trade Zero. Okay. All right. So we can start the show. We have two guests today. One we're going to start with off the top here. We're joined by Jared. So here's where we're at. With Jared, Kirk came on last week. We were talking the week before that even. We said how Kirk is going to negotiate your last contract. Uh, he went on Token CEO. And uh, obviously Erica said some things about starting nine and growth and whatnot. And the first time we heard from you was on Friday on Kirk's show. Dave, are you caught up enough at this point? Not to, again, I know people don't love when you I'm caught up because before the show I had to be like, where is the audio so I can listen to it? We didn't have it. Again, is that on you, Michelangelo? Uh, I sent the audio last night. I, I cut down the clip. Um, it was sent last night. Okay, so I hadn't listened to it. I listened to it. I don't know what Erica said. So here's, here's, here's the playback, okay? So we have, we have Jared and Kirk kind of messing around saying Kirk's going to be his agent. Then we have Kirk going on Token CEO, and Kirk's, you know, presenting his case for Jared, kind of messing around, making some fodder for a segment. And then Erica said what she said. Which I don't know what have, she said. We talked about it last week. Well, we, I know what we talked about, but it was brief. Like, I don't know. Act, I, you're going to ask me to comment on something without knowing I haven't heard what she said. Do we have it? Okay, then let's start with there, Jared. What? Do, what? Do, can you? Can you? Well, I don't want Dave Jared's exactly take. I know he's mad about. It. I heard what Jared said. I want to know what Erica said. All right, then we could pull up that social clip. That's probably the best way to do it. I'd say, right, Jared? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty brief. Yeah. So, Kareem, if you could pull up the social clip for Dave, that's probably the best way to do it from the token CEO account, and then you could watch that. You could see what Erica said. You could see what kind of set Jared off, and then we have Jared's audio from last Friday from the Minahan show. When he responded, and then to my knowledge, there's not been a response from Erica since. Is that right, Jared? Well, I just went on her podcast. Okay, so but that's not out yet, right? That is not out yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's uh, that that's that's kind of where we're at. Does that make sense, Dave? Sort of. <laughs> well, it's well, I mean, it's sort of. It's like we're going to talk about something that I'm sure now. Let me watch what Erica said. This is this is stuff that infuriates me, by the way. Like. This is on you, Michelangelo, right? So I, I would say so. I, I cut down the audio of uh, Jared last night, and I should have, for context, had this clip included. Rather than making documentaries on yourself, why don't you make sure that I have the stuff I need? And then in your free time, you can make documentaries about yourself. Yeah. Yes, okay. Is, so going, he's the guy. Right. From now on, Michelangelo's the guy. If something's not right, it's like, Michelangelo, what are you doing? Is that what I'm being told? Like, this is ridiculous. Jared made a bunch of promises, though, that Jared didn't necessarily keep, which is the issue. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's Like, let's Jared's talk. like, I'm going to be in, I'm going to be in New York every week, every other week. I'm going to be there all the time. Uh, I'd like his baseball podcast to grow. 
Are you saying that it's not grown to the to the numbers that you've wanted to so far? Yes. Okay. I think what's hard for people here is like when you say I'm going to stay connected to the mothership, and you don't stay connected to the mothership, that makes it tough. Right. Like he's not a cast character anymore. You know. Okay. So okay, that's what so you that got mad about, about Jared? Said. Say that again? That's what you got mad about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I took exception to it. I don't know how mad I was, but I, yeah, I didn't agree with it. <clears throat> well, I mean, I heard your clip like, would you still work here? And you're like, I don't know. No, no, no. She said, <laughs> Dave, she said, she, uh, no, Kirk was like, does that change like how you feel about like wanting to stay there? And I was like, I don't know if that changes it, but like, I'm upset about it. Yeah. Like I'm not, it's not like, oh, I'm going to fucking quit or like, oh, I don't want to be there anymore. But like when, no, like, no. Like, I think what she said, that's why I wanted to hear it. And I wanted to see her tone of voice. Like, I think what she said is fair. I don't disagree mm -hmm. with anything. You're less connected as a character. You, you, baseball aside, which has always kind of been your passion, but you're less, like, involved in the mix. No doubt, no doubt. And I, and I feel like, uh, what, what, so I, I went on her podcast today, and the main, I guess, what we took out of it was, if I have something to do, like, I'm here. Like, she asked me to be on her podcast. She sent me a Zoom link. I just showed up. When we did the, the bracket busters, I, no one told me to come. I just showed up. So, I mean, like, when there's something for me to do, I'm 100% here. But, and, it, and it's almost weird because, like, I know that, like, when, when you and I used to talk about Boston and all that, you were like, well, I don't want you to just like go to the Red Sox games. We want you blogging. We want you working. So I'm not saying that I want to stay in Boston because I've got all this stuff going on in Boston that's super exciting. I'm telling my bosses like, hey, I don't want to come to work because I have to work. Like when I go to New York, it's 50 million stopping chats. It's, it's, hey, come do this. Hey, come do that. When I'm in Boston... I got shit to do like all day, all night. Like I'm watching the games. I got the fucking seven TVs going. Now, if I come to New York, we've got morning wood. That's our, our nightly baseball show. I built like a studio in my apartment. So like there's three different walls and it's got three different backdrops for the three different video shows that I'm doing. So if I come to New York, it's like, all right, now my backdrop is the fucking hotel that I got booked to stay at. Like, it's almost like, you know, KFC radio has their, studio and part of my take has their studio i just built that in boston so like now all my shows have their custom studios everything looks better there and i have more time to do all my shit yeah so i mean i listen i you, you to me you seem overly sensitive in your reaction to what she said but i don't necessarily i mean Again, we had the talk. I never thought you're going to be a lot in New York. And clearly, if something's in New York that we have, whether it be the draft or whatever, you're there. But the, the one mm -hmm. thing about being in New York or anywhere where there's more people, you can't necessarily like predict when something happens and you become part of like a story. Now, you never liked doing that or were like huge on that. So, again, to me, there's much to do about nothing in a way. And clearly, Erica with the token CEO has – dripped into content which you know no I, doubt i've never taken like you like you then at the end of what you said you're like when dave rips somebody or says it doesn't make him work harder i think actually sometimes it does depending on who it is but like i that's always been my vibe i've never heard you like complain about that or if you have complained no, I, I haven't put I've, much like i haven't put much weight on it it's like that's just how i am yeah, with you, I mean, and that's kind of why, like, with Erica, it was a weird dynamic because when you come at me, I'm probably one of the only people that's going to come back at you just as hard, like the fucking uh, the Duncan Awards. Like, when you got on me for, like, not dressing up, uh, it, I was the only person that came in like an idiot and just battled back when everyone else was like, I'm so sorry, Dave, it'll never happen again, Dave. So, like, that's just always been our dynamic. But I think when what really pissed me off was, you know, saying that, like, starting nine is not growing or whatever because like that's like that's like damaging like now like people people that hate us will have ammo to be like well you can't grow a podcast and your podcast sucks and then a few days later i tweeted out the charts starting nine is number one like it's the number one baseball podcast i don't think you can go higher than number one so that's why i was like i don't i don't get what what the benefit was to say that on a podcast when erica and i 
Erica and I had the meeting, I think it was in December or January, of, and she said all that to me. So I already knew. So now you're just letting the public know, like, hey, you have issues with the growth or whatever. But, I mean, it's still popular enough to where it's number one in the charts. And I didn't think it was fair to say that it was not growing when it's like baseball was the only sport that didn't play a full season. Like, we get 50% of our interviews in spring training. Both of the, That got canceled in 2020, got canceled in 2021. So we were at a disadvantage there. And then we played one-third of a season. Every other sport played a full season. So it's like those – factors need to be acknowledged and i forgot to say this on kirk show 2020 the year that we didn't like we've grown year over year 17 through 19 2020 we didn't grow but 2020 was the most lucrative year for for the podcast ever like it, it may not have grown in subscriptions but we made more money in 2020 as a podcast than any other year so none of that was mentioned and yeah i mean like i, I feel like if it was something that there was an issue like call me like let me know and we'll, and we'll talk about it or we'll come up with a solution i just felt like if i wasn't on the podcast like give me a chance to defend myself yeah so that's fair and i guess uh, i mean and i may be wrong on it i think there is and it's hard because we we're so close erica and i and we do there is bleed over whether it's me doing business or her doing content but there's still an element like i don't think you would have reacted the same way if i said what she said in what way like if I said this, which same, part? The all of it. I I think it would have been different because you can't say like, "Hey, he's never in the office." When you're in Miami, I'm sitting in your fucking chair right now in New York. I think it's like but I mean, I, I could it would have been funnier. It. I, could I would have been more. I, I think if you said what Erica said, I think I would have been more lighthearted about it because I would have been like, "Dave, come on! Like you're in Miami. Like you're moving to Miami. Like how, what are you going to talk to me about going to Boston for?" When, well, I'm following your lead. You set the lead. Nobody has to be in the office. Yeah. So it's like if no one else right. is gonna if no one else is gonna be here, why I'm gonna be sitting here just with Nate. Right. And and I think like the point about like how it was so weird to me where I had to convince my bosses, like, hey, I don't want to come into work because I actually want to work. Like when I come back, it's like, hey, where you been? How you doing? How you doing? Hey, you wanna do this show? Do you wanna do that show? When really it's like I have seven a six seven shows that i'm on right now and i just that's how my brain works what are like your the, shows seven shows starting nine section 10 kirk minahan the secret project that's uh we're we're gonna be i'll probably see you in a few days uh the secret project i hope not um stay hot or not morning wood what's stay hot and or then not? We were, yeah it's a video show Stay hot or not, and then we have uh, Are You Smarter Than a Big Leaguer? So there you go, seven shows. All sponsored. No, it's great. And, and by the way, the, the one thing I will say, and, and Erica definitely has like CEO pressure of revenue, bottom line, reporting to people. I don't really deal with that. She shields me from that. But baseball, I, I wouldn't even say the cancellation. Baseball is just a different audience. It's like the NBA is more – like they listen on a larger scale to podcasts and social, like baseball is not. So like when you said you're number one, it's hard to grow and it's hard to grow. We have a lot of salary, a lot of money, but it's like baseball is so antiquated in a lot of what, what they do that I do think it affects social media, podcasts, all of that, because they're almost weirdly anti that. Right. And, and I feel like, so like perfect example, like when, when you called me, when you were doing the stream, and you were sitting next to Marty, and he was like, you're the fucking Rex Chapman of uh, baseball Twitter. There's a reason why I do that. Like, every single night, I'm watching every single baseball game. I'm tweeting every single home run. And every caption may not be fucking hilarious, but I'm trying to go viral with every single baseball tweet to grow my social following so that I can now redirect them to my baseball shows. Because... It, like, it is an older audience. Baseball is an older audience. There are young fans out there, but it's it's my responsibility to go out there and find them because Dallas can't be doing that. Like He's on the A's broadcast, so it falls on me to every single night tweet every single highlight so that I can be drawing followers back in to now redirect them to the podcast and to the video shows. So like call me fucking Rex Chapman all you want, but... That's the logic behind it. Is there uh, who is I, Rex Chapman? Not bad. I have a question, and then we can let you <laughs> yeah. go. This is a real question. This is like a serious. Sure. How would you attribute? And maybe it's I answered it before. The success 
of spit and chiclets versus starting nine. Like, and this isn't a put because I, I think, like, I think Dallas is very good. Now, he's preoccupied with a lot of the stuff that he does, maybe, but he's very good. You're very good. I think you're as good uh, as someone who hasn't played the game. But that obviously, Spit and Chicklets went bananas. Is in outside of hockey is a top podcast in any world. You guys top in baseball, but you're baseball. Um, like, have you like I don't have that answer or I would have told you why I'm sure you've thought about it yeah there's a few reasons why in my opinion I mean there's no way to actually quantify it number one um we don't have our biz like biz came in with a million followers and just was like bang and then they they strapped a rocket ship to their ass um there's been names that I've thrown around but like it's it's tough with baseball like they got lucky with biz and wit where it was like these guys established themselves in the league they're strong personalities and they retired young enough to where they can just go do a podcast and they, they have the ambition to do it and grow it and care about it in baseball. These guys, if you're a name, you're probably playing until your late thirties, early forties. And by the time that comes, you might have a cushy job at MLB network where you're not grinding, like taking the fight. Like we got lucky with Dallas. Like he doesn't have an ego to the point where he he's against like, no, I, I threw a perfect game. Like I'm not going to get on a fucking tour bus and drive around Florida. So to find the right fit is big. And then I also think, and I know hockey has them. I think baseball has the biggest presence of fuck barstool crowd from a sport standpoint oh, i think hockey's bad. i actually my outside, hockey's terrible i think hockey is like the worst hockey is bad no doubt but they have a monster uh audience in canada like we don't they're, like the, they're not listening to podcasts in the dominican republic or else we would probably be we up there uh if we had like venezuela and puerto rico and the dominican republic and cuba the same way that chicklets has canada i think we'd be cooking with gas but it's just not that way um but i think you know with chicklets they have done a great job of you know being regular guys while having the credibility of being professionals um, they're relatable. They don't just talk about hockey. So if you don't necessarily love hockey and are a diehard fan, you can relate. And with starting nine, it's like I, that, that fuck barstool crowd exists like in the baseball community, like unlike anything that I've ever seen before. I mean, people, people will come at me. Like if I have like a take that goes against your favorite team or your favorite player, their comeback is just like, well, fuck barstool. It's like, okay fuck you dude like like it, it has nothing to do with that so I, I think that that has been a hurdle where we have competition in the baseball space that I think Chicklets doesn't have in in the hockey space I think that people will naturally gravitate towards the well this isn't barstool so I support this and, and it's you know it's an uphill battle but I mean like we're still fighting it and number one's number one I think it's just a matter of like getting number one to be bigger than the number one that it is now. And, and I feel like, you know, we do that and we've been growing with the spring training trips. And when those don't happen, I mean, see it like when we're sitting down with Bryce Harper, that's different than, yeah, we got Bryce Harper on a zoom and that, that interview is awesome. Like he's never done a sit down like that ever, but does that grow our audience even more if spring training doesn't get canceled and we're sitting next to him and we're doing that and people are seeing it and they're like, you know what, if Bryce Harper's down with these guys, why, why am I not? You know? And I feel like we've built relationships with these teams to the point where we know guys on virtually every single team. And you know, you get to that point where you, like, we're just trying to convert people, you know, like if you are anti barstool, like you might still be down with starting nine because we're sitting down with your favorite players and, and they like us and they're vouching for us. So when we don't have that opportunity, the last two spring trainings to do or that, maybe you just like, are it, so it long winded in your answers that people fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to be thorough, Dave, by the way, could those shorts be any fucking shorter? I can see your nuts. Because I'm sitting on a couch. These are, you say that, these are going to be uh, Balls Beachwear spring next year. Thanks for bringing Ooh, those. attention to it. Those are nice. Those look good. All right, Eddie. Good. All right, Jared. Yeah, I think that's uh, anything else you want to get out. Because it was, to me, I want to bring you on because that was a very real moment when you paused there. When he said, it, is, does this change if you want to re-sign with Barstool? So I thought, that was, I thought that was vital. Much, you... I heard that, Eddie. <laughs> I've known this guy for forever. He, 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 handed me an award. he handed me an award at a blog show in Boston saying, like, I was his idol. He's not going anywhere. 
I mean, it's <laughs> – it's not, yeah, like I will admit that like there are times where I do get frustrated and I talked about just I talked about this on the podcast with Erica where, you know, 2018 we crushed it. What was Dave's feedback? Well, you fucked up the parade with the merch. 2019. That was we crushed bad it. though. And that, that was bad. I mean, we still were hitting bonuses left and right. That was bad. Oh, you, yeah, it was bad. Well, the Red Sox won the World Series. Yeah, I know. You I can't was there. It was awesome. the Red Sox won the World Series, then it's time mm. to give you a third I, nap. Yeah, and it's uh, the most part, like the thing that I take from it in my experience with you, Dave, is to not always take everything to heart. Like the the 2019 season, that was a long grind. What was what was the feedback from Dave at the end of the year? You fucking suck. <laughs> Direct quote, text message to me. You fucking suck. So it's like you got to be like, all right, yeah, Dave, Dave's in a mood. Like maybe he had a bad gambling day today. It is what it is, but you still – like that's why I said – like, you know, it doesn't promote a hardworking culture when you just shit on people. But the the Milton crowd, like that group, like my brain is just programmed to do that. Like, so I, let me ask you now that I'm here. Opening day, did you did you want me to be there? Did you care if I was there? Like, I, I was having this battle because we did the, the, the snake draft with Eddie and the Chicago guys. And White Sox Dave just openly was like, well, I'm going to opening day. And I was like, you're saying that out loud? Like, I, I didn't know. I went, you know, I, mean, I was like, I'm going to work all well, there. Clearly, I've had, I, I'm less, like, aware or hands-on. I won't get mad at White Sox, Dave. There's more of, like, everyone kind of do you. We have a lot more employees. Um, but, no, I wouldn't have cared. Maybe I would have busted your balls in a joke, but I wouldn't have cared as much. That, that era was an era, and I think Big Cat can probably, like, say the same, and Kevin to a degree. Of the era of like a decade of never going to things we wanted to go to because we had to cover them from home. So, right. you know what? It, it's a different time now for sure. And, and it's hard to get on somebody when I know other people are doing different things. It's just a different time. And, and you do have to remind yourself that you just you simply are tougher on the guys that you like more. Like the like you sending out an email shitting on me to the entire company is low key a compliment. You mean when you didn't promote the brackets? No, uh, no, no, no. It was, uh, what was it, Cyber Monday? Detroit. It was, it was either Cyber Monday or uh, Black Friday. It was one of those. Yeah. Yeah, those, well, yeah. That, <laughs> I don't know if that's like, I like it. It's like this fucking guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I offered an explanation on Erica's podcast, but I didn't, I didn't make an excuse with you. All right, Eddie. All right, Jared. Thanks for coming. All right, on, guys. Man. Appreciate it. See ya. Be good. Um, all right, so we're gonna swap over to our second guest. Before we do though, let's talk about Simply Safe, Dave. Hopefully that's in order. We got papers it is. in order now. All right. Perfect. So Simply we Safe. Simply safe. Uh, protect everything. I'm in a nice home. Got to protect it. People know where you are. Uh, even if you already feel safe, it may not be true of everyone in your home. It's a have that conversation. Simply Safe makes it so easy. It takes about two minutes to customize system on their website. SimplySafe.com slash port. Like, my parents are actually here, Eddie. I haven't seen them since the beginning of COVID. First time I've seen them. Really? Since, this yeah. is the first time? First time. So How about go, that? And it felt I felt like old times. I saw him instantly, and my mom's got a suitcase. They're staying over. My dad came in. He's like, let me just put my stuff here so I don't write in the middle of the set. Um, sour cream cake. But they're here, so I could, you know, I know they are like a big safety couple. Uh, so yeah, sim- there you go. SimplySafe.com slash Portnoy. System arrives seven days. takes 30 minutes to set up. Go to simplysafe.com slash Portnoy today. Customize your system. Get a free security camera. Also get a 60-day risk-free trial. Nothing to lose. That's simplysafe.com slash Portnoy. And then let's introduce our next guest. All right, none other on, than Dad. Mr. Portnoy. I wish we, we need the video of him beforehand uh, behind just lurking around. He was like tucking in his shirt. And you're like, Dad, you got to get out of the shop. He asked if he could just sit there. What time is it? Oh, I got a watch on. My watch is not working. I feel like I get a call at five. It's three. Okay, good. It's cool. He's slowly meandering his way here. All right. The house water. looks sick. You want a water? <laughs> yeah. Kareem will, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Porno, how are you? Eddie, how are you? Good, good. It's good to have you back. How you been? I mean, it's been. Uh, have been, you lost your mind since Sirius ended? A little bit. You miss <laughs> it? Yeah. Do I miss doing my show? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You said I would. I thought. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. No, I. I like doing it. 
I'm going to try to do so something else. So what do you else. do during that hour now? What, what do you, that, what do, you what do, do during that, that time? What does that mean? You're going to try to do something else? I Thank you. Uh, I've had discussions with a few people about doing a podcast. At, with us? Yeah. Who? Yeah. Who what? <laughs> who? Who are you? A podcast yeah. with who? No, I, I spoke to Jen, and we talked. I had some ideas about what I thought I would do. And she thought it was good, and I told She says everything is good, but what, what was the ideas? The ideas... You know they have to go through me to get approved. I don't care about that. Well, I mean, they do. Well, you know, I'm in a different position than our last guest. I, he works for you. I really, when all is said and done, what are you going to do to me that's going to be so tough? You can't hurt me. I'm I mean, not saying I could no, hurt I'm you. Saying, even, to do a podcast, it has to be... What is, I'm going to eventually all right, find what out. What I thought of doing was something similar to what Kevin's doing, Okay interviewing people like Eddie. I was going to interview Kevin, talk about um, things other than just Bastel things, to get so people would get to know. I don't know, the, I, I like Eddie, but I don't know the first thing about your background. I know you that you work for Howard Stern, but I don't know anything other than that. And I like you. I'd like to get some information about you, about your life, about how'd you end up where you are right this minute. That's what I'm, I'm in. in. I'll drive to Schwamscott tomorrow, Miami, wherever you want to do it, Mr. Portnoy. Okay, I'm not there right now, Eddie, but it's all Can right. Can I? And Eddie, from a third party, yeah. what is the difference between that and what Kevin does? Very little. Uh, you're sitting right next to him. He's got the mask hanging. He's asking for water bottles. He's tucking and in his shirt. Plus fact, can Everything. I tell you something? You know who my first guest was going to be if I did this? It was going to be Kevin. Because I spoke to Kevin about it. So he greenlit it? Yeah. He said, do you have any problem with me doing this? And, and he said, absolutely not. Okay. All right. So I'm not quite as behind as you think I am. I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't going to do it if, if he felt that he didn't want to see that happen. So, so I did discuss it with him. And I said to him, I think I'd like you to be my first so guest. Okay. So it's like behind Barstool 2. Yeah. All right. Behind the blog, too? Yeah. He is basically identical to what Kevin does, except as my dad is the interviewer. Yeah. Okay. I think there's more than one interview show that you see everywhere, anyway. Totally. Yeah. He's so far ahead too. of you, Dave. He talked to Jen. He talked to Kevin. You're not even, like... Eventually, it'll be brought to my... I figured that. I didn't think yeah. it was going to go on. You wouldn't know about it. Right. No, I, I have I, to approve it. Yeah, so that's fine. So if you didn't approve it, what am I going to do? Kill myself? No, I, I would hope not. That seems extreme. Yeah, I would say that's extreme. I want so to tell when you, is this supposed to start? I, I have no start date, all right? I want to tell you something, though. I'm reading a book about, you know, my favorite person, David Letterman. Yeah. You know how I love David Letterman, and I still miss him not being in the... But I'm reading a, 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 this latest book about him and there are a lot of similarities to you and some of the Boston issues uh I don't think uh, Letterman is very insecure no matter how successful he became <laughs> it was incredibly how insecure he was about his abilities and I don't think you are at all I'm that's not what I'm talking about but one thing that does seem pretty similar to me as especially from you remember there was a writer's strike on a show in New York, Letterman's show, uh, he, he, there was a strike. He went off the air for a while, then he came back on. I didn't really, I, vaguely. Yeah, but, but yeah. then after that strike, the dynamic between the writers and Let, Letterman changed radically. And this is where I think, I do see some similarities. A lot of the writers wouldn't, you had to have, they had to have an appointment to speak to Letterman because he became so distant from them and what was behind a lot of it was after the writers strike I think he started to realize I really don't need these writers what are they, what are they here for we ran a show here for whatever time period it is we didn't have any writers and we did fine uh, so I see some similarities where people don't feel they're getting their due or whatnot and they they every the writers are competing with each other to get let them to even pay attention and to any of their ideas. And, the, and as time went on, it got worse and worse, too. In the end, he was, he was just totally distanced from these people who, when he started, it was such a big part of the whole operation. Uh, and now the part where I'm at right now is when he left NBC to go to CBS and that whole, that whole story. I find it very interesting because a lot of the, a lot of the, 
the skits they're talking about from way back when I saw them, like the time the, uh, the stage caught on fire and a lot of people thought it was a joke. It was not a joke. <laughs> they were having, they were staging a, uh, I think it was either a, a mock by mitzvah or a marriage and uh, a wedding and something somehow caught fire on the stage and he had to start stamping it out. And these are things, and all this stuff, I saw it when it happened. So I find it interesting, which you probably don't. Well, I know you're a big Letterman fan. Yeah. We yeah. used to have, uh, I thought, oh, I mean, we had a room full of v VHS. Yeah. Every VCR, every, because you just taped every Letterman. Yeah, I did. And I still, oh, I still, you still got them? What's that? Do you still have the VHSs? I doubt it. Because I think what happened when you, when you could do it, uh, you know, without any tapes and just set set the recording. I would just watch. I still today. I still watch the late night shows, the you know the uh, various Kimmel and whatnot. I, I who's your favorite now? Uh, I'm going to surprise you with this, and of course I just got a cramp. Trevor Noah. <laughs> Trevor Noah. Where did you feel a cramp? No, I brain cramp. I almost forgot uh -oh. his name. <laughs> he is the worst. Trevor Noah? Oh, he's horrible. Well, we'll have his to... delivery is I he is think... maybe the least funny like comedian I've ever listened to. Well, we'll have to agree oh. to disagree. I, I mean, the guy I understand... before him was spectacular, John Stewart. He, he the, yeah. the, the, the And I also oh. think I also think Colbert when he was on comedy the Comedy Channel was better than now. Colbert was Col terrible now, he was great on Comedy Central. And Colbert lost his main thing when the Trumpster left. Well, he wasn't even good then. Well, Who's we'll have to agree Dave? to disagree. What? My favorite what? Uh, late night. I don't really watch it. I don't really watch it. I mean, I, Trevor Noah, I started paying attention to what he hosts, the Oscars or whatever. And it, I, I thought it was insufferably bad. And then I actually started paying attention a little bit. And I think he's just, in general, insufferably bad with the way he delivers jokes. You're trying to say Insuff insufferable. Insufferably. I don't think that's a word. But that's neither here nor there. So, so I want to say in his book, defense. How, how does it remind you? What? Like, I see what he's saying. There's an element of truth to what he said, which is, is you know, like the Miami move, if the summer didn't happen and a lot of things that went down over the course of the year, I definitely felt a little bit like, what, what am I doing? Like, I've personally kind of made it. And what am I doing living in a place like... You see Jared, right? Jared moves to Boston. He wants to be in Boston. His mental health, and I don't want to do quotes, but a lot of people, I hear that a lot. Barcel, he does better in Boston. He does better other people, this, that. Everyone's looking out, and I'm in a place I don't necessarily love either, and I'm in there trying to work my ass off. It's like, you know what? I, I, I'm going to take a step back. I'm still working just as hard, just like Jared says, but I'm in a different location that I enjoy more, and I get to enjoy some of the success I've had. It's like, I'm not going to... If I don't think people are as appreciative or, or care what I bring to the table being there, I'm not going to be there. So I've been better now even surrounding myself on trips with people I like and, and things like that as opposed to everybody else. So that did change. And when he says writer's strike, it's something that clicks where it's like, what am I busting my ass for you for? And, there was, and, and a lot of our dynamics have changed a little bit. In the office, people have left who I don't like, but whatever. But, you know, there's a lot of headaches. As says, what, what am I dealing with this for? Like, they need me a hell of a lot more than I need them. I think that uh, you're, I'm not trying your personality in Letterman's, some, there were some similarities with others. What do you think of Chris Elliott? The comedian? Yes. I mean, I think he's funny. You think he is funny? Yeah. Yeah, he is very funny. He became, uh, this is, you don't, this is way before your time. Bob and Ray were a very popular comedy duo on the radio. And, Bob uh, and Ray? Yeah, I know you don't know who they are. The only reason I mention it is Chris Elliott's father was, was one of the guys on that team. And they were very popular in radio years, years ago. Letterman and, and <laughs> uh, Chris Elliott had absolutely no... He was like, he started as a, a, a guy going to get coffee worked his way up to became Letterman's man. It literally became, if you watched Letterman, you saw Chris Elliott did all these bits, the guy from under the stairs, 
And he had a whole thing. He made a movie. And, and Letterman, who never did this, did a cameo in the movie. And then just the show that's on now that just won the Emmys, uh, Chris Elliott has a role in that. Uh, Schitt's Creek. Chris Elliott. Anybody watch Schitt's Creek? Chris very Elliott. Show. Huh? Very, very popular show. Yeah. Chris Elliott had a big role in that. And, and uh, I think he's very popular. But the point is, he became Letterman's number one guy, even though he had no reason to ever get to that point. But in the end, that Letterman leaned on him for everything in the end. Which what I, was, I don't, that was a meandering. What does that have to do with anything? No, you're talking about comedians and people you like and you don't like. And it's I Chris that's Elliott, I, Dave. Yeah, you Thank follow you, that, Eddie? Eddie? It's Chris Elliott. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, do you understand why I brought him up? Uh, uh, Forget it, Eddie. I don't like yeah, the way I do, you're having and hiring him. What? I got you. When Mr. Eddie doesn't you formally worry. have your back, that means you just went off on something that nobody knows what the hell yeah, I know he's. I know he, he's protected me from you a couple times, I think. Yeah, he does. He, yeah, that's why for him not to be like, of is course that, I know what you're talking about. Is then. that your nature? I'm just curious about that. Not with me, but generally. Yeah. Well, yeah, you like to, you like you, to. He could do maybe like I've never out. listened to Rogan. I know it's like a four-hour podcast, but maybe these interviews are just meandering philosophies on nothing in particular for like six hours. And I'm I, in. I'm in. How do you like the house, Mister Portnoy? What do you think? You know Is something? I possibly... believe they just got here. I just got here. I've seen nothing. We had a hard time. We had no problem getting to this street. But we had a big problem finding where you were. I, I almost stopped because they're outside playing basketball. And I was sad, and I almost stopped, but I, this couldn't be it. They were, I don't know what I thought, but you no, know, I. Uh, Are you thinking about making the move down there as well? We had a foot, Miami? Yeah. Never. No? No. We have a place there. In, They're in an old person. They're like Boca. Boca del Vista. Yeah. Like oh, the okay. Seinfeld. All right. So you yeah. would have want them a little closer, Dave? The big house? It's not that, <laughs> no, it's not that far. They came down. It was like an hour drive. Yeah. It's not that far. I, the, answer to question, the answer to that question is no. <laughs> a big no. Don't want them closer. <laughs> we haven't so this like is, you this said, is your I, first time. Since I think the last time you didn't come to right? You, so it's been. It's first time since COVID. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's long a time. long time. Yeah. Well, it's like you go the whole routine. They're, they're getting up there. It's You make it a certain you know, a certain distance by quarantining, you might as well just go the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. They got the vaccine. Oh, there you go. Did you drive or did you, did you fly? How'd you do this? From, they're, they're an hour away, Eddie. Oh, oh, so they're We have a place yeah, about yeah, an, yeah, hour, yeah, 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 yeah. an hour north. Gotcha. Okay. I thought you came down from, from swamps. Interesting. Okay. And how long are you staying? What's on the, what's on the agenda? For I don't the know. They're sleeping over. I didn't totally know that till I saw them come in with the suitcase, which is <laughs> totally fine. I haven't seen them. So we'll probably eat dinner and just catch up. Yeah. And we got the sour cream cake. We're all good to go. Yeah. Yep. Saw that. That's a bonus. Yep. She went through a lot of extra effort to get that done. That's great. That's great. This is. I'm happy we had the reunion. Like a lot. Like right when he walked in on the show. So, yeah, I mean, he can be more uh, of a role on the show now that he ha doesn't have his own show. He could. I don't think he so could, after yeah. what's going on today. <laughs> Why? Well, I would love to do that. I mean, but you know, we could easily carve in a segment, Mister Portnoy. But whatever book you're reading, with the, your best tidbit, just come in and then you just bounce it off us, and we. Get I, I'll take. tell you something. I I haven't been reading hardly at all, but this lately but this book really interests me it, because like i said a minute ago we're talking lot, about the dave letterman book again yeah a lot of, tell us about it <laughs> your mother's laughing in the background you see, they, see this is what i want to say this is letterman all what he's doing right now is what letterman did with I'm a, not doing no, anything. no i want it to then this is why i love with a straight face letterman could be mocking someone and they wouldn't even realize it i mean well, you that, realized that, it well, I'm an educated guest. I know you, and I know Letterman, and I know your mother's laughing in the background. So I, I get the whole thing. And he said, tell us about it. He doesn't want to hear about it, Mr. Portnoy. That was a lead on. You know what he was doing. Oh, no, he didn't want to hear What book? Huh? What book are we talking about? Are you kidding me now? <laughs> <laughs> I had him there for a second. <laughs> No, he was, he, was, he was hoping I would yell at him or something. <laughs> no, I, we haven't had, about it. We, we, you know, I, and I've always said this, whenever, 
the conversations that we would have in private on the phone are exactly what we're doing right now. I mean, there's not an iota of difference. Whatever I say, he's challenging me on it, and I'm trying to defend I myself. I haven't challenged you. you want... I haven't challenged anything. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's great to have you back. Well, yeah, I would Mr. like to Boyle. come back. Yeah, I'm not coming down here to do it again, but... Yeah, well, we'll we'll get it's something in the works. It's not that far. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think a, uh, I don't think Jared's especially happy with this whole situation. I I hadn't heard the clip. What Erica said, I thought was fair. She looks at different perspective. I mean, he's a content guy in my mind. It's hard to baseball is a different category, but you know. It's fair for her, for him to, to react however he wants. She's putting a podcast out there, so it's fair game. You know who uh, uh, does a great job is your fo football guy. Absolutely great. Right. Right the call. Jerry? Huh? Jerry? Jerry. Yeah. Thornton? Yeah, Jerry Thornton. I think he, he's, and he hasn't slowed down with the writing one iota during this whole COVID. You don't agree with that? I just, like, he's been with us for, like, two decades. I know decades. that. He was, at, he was at your wedding. I know that. He was. Trust yeah, me. He's very good at covering the Patriots. He's excellent. I'm saying there has been no drop-off at all. I think he works hard in writing in, with those columns. Mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I, I find it interesting. What do you think is going to happen with the Patriots? I think they'll be very good. What, I'm talking about the draft of a quarterback. I have no idea. I never know what they're going to do. But I, have, I, like, I think Belichick's – I think the Patriots will be back with a vengeance. They're I was listening to something on one of these shows. And they're talking about them trying to get uh, the Ohio State – draft the Ohio State quarterback. Fields. Yeah, and if, they're saying if they got him, they will be back immediately. Who, who's they? The Patriots. No, but – you said like you, you re they were saying. Oh, I was saying I, I was listening to probably something on ESPN or something. I don't even I don't know the names of the guys, but you know the, the quote unquote experts, and they were saying if they get they they uh, if if he comes to the Patriots, it's going to be a, a quick rise back to the top. Do you put any faith in what they say on ESPN? Depends who's talking. Like I, the death. That's an ongoing thing. He, 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 I know. He, I, can I just say, I know what you're going to say. Before you even say it, I know what you he's, Whenever I say anything, he'll say to me, where'd you get that from? Well, he, he, if he hears something on TV or sees on the internet, it's fact. And, and, but since you might not believe this, but I'm not in the Patriots locker room. Okay. So where, where does anybody that's not right there get the opinion that they have. they got to get it from someone that they consider knows more about is a little bit on the inside other than I am not. So if it sounds credible, I might feel that this might be true. I don't know why you always had a problem with because that. Because they're, they're, they're wrong far more than they are right. But for, for the average Joe like me, you want me to have first... So it's just a... Like, uh, I saw on ESPN, somebody said if they get Justin Fields, the Pagers will be back So quickly. what's wrong with that? It's, it's ridiculous. I, like, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they get... I don't know. It's like, he's Justin Fields. He's a top quarterback. I'm coming back if Justin Fields is drafted by the Patriots. Like, there are rumors, like that. but... Thank you, Eddie. What about is are you, is everything smoothed over? I actually I, I just remembered. I think the last time you were on Mr. Portnoy yeah, you got mad was the uh, what, what did you What did they get mad? Smarcus Mamonis. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Are you trying to stir something up? <laughs> well, I'm just making sure like dinner's going to be okay tonight. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I forgot. I didn't even know what you're talking I was, about. I, I was. You threw a tantrum. <laughs> I wasn't happy about how that was handled. And as much as you try to keep things under control, you didn't do a very good job of that. <laughs> but I know you're trying hard. But, but <laughs> I tried. No, I mean, we'll have to, another thing we'll have to agree to disagree about that. You, you said to me, as I recall, what you were accusing me of was intentionally doing something with him, Simonis, that, that uh, I said something, and I, it wasn't right. I don't, wanna, I don't even remember exactly the details, although it wasn't all that long ago. But uh, no, right. no well, need thanks, to bring Eddie. it up, Eddie. No need to bring it up. Yeah. I haven't seen COVID. I don't want to go. I know I was right, and everybody who listened to it yeah. uniformly. When I, when I say 99%, 100% no, no, unbiased no, 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 no. You're not right about right. that. Oh. 
I especially remember the one thing that I saw that somebody wrote and said to me, your son should be ashamed of himself. Yeah. I remember that one. <laughs> that one, I re some of the others weren't so complimentary, but that one was. Specifically that. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Eddie. I uh, just, you know, I had to check in, right? It's yeah, a show. Yeah, I like the way you're doing this with a straight face, too. That was, that was, uh, yeah. You're you a recurring can guest, Mr. Portnoy. What's that? You're a recurring guest, so I got to make sure all yeah. our appearances are in line, yeah. you know? I'm well, going to have you on. If I ever on. do this, I'm going to have you on. I am curious about you in particular. I would love to. I would love to, Mr. Portnoy. Do you mind if I do that? If I... No, it sounds like a great episode, great show. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll have Jared on next. <laughs> there you go. Well, all right, Dave, you want to keep rolling through the topics? I mean, you could stay, whatever you want to do. You want to add some in, it's whatever you. whatever we want to do here. Well, I'm not going to say anything. I'll just, can I just sit here sure. and listen? No, that's great. So we, we can keep, keep moving. Uh, you definitely give us some tweets and stuff, Dave. I like the live tweets from dinner about what your dad's doing. And I'm sure I'll have some. Rooms. He gets angry when I do that, but I'm sure I'll have some. <laughs> um. Let's talk about Manscaped for a second, though, Dave. Uh, you know, sometimes you need to, to cut the bush, right? You know, yep. if you haven't, you got that one? Yep, I do. Um, yeah, Manscaped dedicating to help you help level your full body grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0 kit. Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with the Essential Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer, a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your grooming routine. Get 20% off free shipping with the code PORTNOY20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off for free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code PORTNOY20. It's 2021 and you still got bush. Change that with Manscaped. Get 20% to get off again and free shipping with the code PORTNOY20 at manscaped.com. Perfect. Okay, so manscaped.com, moving it into your kind of world here. Uh, I don't, we don't need to get into it because I'm sure you've been fucking talking about it for the past two days. But are you into this TikTok drama right now? Like, are you, are you I just did BFFs. Yeah, how can you not be? I mean, I almost tweeted out the other day. It, it, it's crazy. It's almost more deal with it. Like, obviously, I've got to know Josh, right? And it's for those who aren't paying the TikTok drama, basically his best friend, quote unquote, because I don't know how, but one of his good friends who he's living with, who we knew at Barstool, like met him, all our guys like Spider, Kareem, like he's in the house when we go there, is now dating his ex-girlfriend, who he was like basically proclaimed his love for. So it's crazy drama. They're all super famous. Um, the Jaden kid and Nessa have like a song with Travis Barker. They're on like the Ellen show. They're on Kimmel. So they're legit like stars and the song is actually really good. So yeah, it's crazy. Nessa has been on my podcast, the BFF twice. Like, so it, I'm very in the middle of it and it's um, surreal that I jumped into this TikTok thing and then this drama lands, which is the biggest TikTok controversy story, paparazzi since I've been doing it and, and it can't be more core to like what we're doing. And we get millions of views, last episodes, literally on YouTube, which is hard to do. Like an hour show, a million views, that's a lot. So it is interesting. Um, we, we filmed it, I think it'll kind of wrap. But yes, it's, uh, I mean, it was worldwide trending. This isn't just things I'm interested in. It's my mom banging around. It's worldwide <laughs> trending. Yeah, and I think, I, I, obviously I do, did you see Kevin's One Minute Man by chance? No. About it all? He essentially said, like, at what point are we just saying, okay, they're all in their 20s. They're all young people. Like, they're going to be cheating on each other and banging each other's girlfriends. Well, that, that's a very Kevin answer, though. Like, were people not interested in Britney and, and Timberlake? Like, people have to do a paradigm shift. These are the new stars. Like, they're not necessarily young. It's TikTok. So people didn't say that with, like, Timberlake and Britney or Jessica Simpson and the guy from what, like, but so what's the difference? Yeah, no, that, 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 that's a good point. And I, the way it lined up, though, because those guys are down there right now, right? Yeah. With that, her going on Call Her Daddy and Mads. them being there, right? Like, that's like, a, is it an inside job? Or we, we got no, two? No, no, it's not at all. It really no. isn't. You could accuse the other two, Nessa and Jaden, because they have this song in their careers, but it's not the other. 
I mean, Cooper's okay. a savage. We were supposed to have Mads. That's the girl who dated. People are going to be like, what are you talking about? Mads is the girl who dated Jaden, and then they split. And we were going to have Mads on our podcast. And then Josh, this is how you know it's real. He's like, no, I don't want her. It's like two parts. It's like, I, I'm not ready to deal with it. Cooper slid in and did it. Okay. That was. But it's the viral. Way it it, it, up again, I, I get what people are saying. It was like, why are you doing TikTok? Why? They're just the new breed of celebrities. They really are. Then, how number one? How is like hanging out this whole weekend? You guys, what's you guys been getting after it? What's going on? Well, yeah, uh, Kareem's been with them. We went to dinner one night. They're in town. That's it. I have. They were over the podcast. We'll probably do stuff on the weekend. They're going to some of the similar events that I am. Um, but I, I, we haven't hung out at all. And I do get that. Like, I like him, but he is super young. So, you know, I, I, as crazy as I am, I get the age difference. Even, like, I haven't said a word about Nessa. Not one. Like, she's a young girl. I'm not going to, like, Jaden, little older, 20s, best friend. I'll take some shots. But people who know me and know what I do when I really go, like, I haven't done that. A couple funny memes. That's it. Foot's on the break a little bit. De- then there was... Uh... Changing topics here for a second. There was another page six article. Um, so the, the I don't know how to put this great with you're with talking the room a sex you're video. Yes, yes. Yeah, third one, and they'll probably keep coming out. I remember my dad and my mom like asking me at in Miami like whether I released them on purpose. I don't. They're all old at this point. My major concern with them, like I feel bad, my parents maybe, but it's like. The girl involved, like when they release it, the person who's releasing these, and I have no idea who they are or why they come out when they come out or anything. I have no idea. But they're not thinking the repercussions of the girl at all. Like, I'm pretty thick-skinned at this point. It takes a lot to stun me or, like, have me backpedaling. It sucks. It, it kind of happened when we were filming last time. Like, oh, the stock dropped. That was my main concern. But the people are releasing it, like, the girl in this case... Savage, she's like owned it. Like she's gonna do an OnlyFans, this, that. Fine. Then I have no, I don't care. It's like she's cool. She's doing OnlyFans? Yeah, I think she's gonna, yeah. Wow. So like Do you like her coming out and saying that? I don't care. In a weird way, some of the people who don't like me are trying to make it sound like, oh, he's being like rude, like it wasn't somehow totally consensual or like we're not on the same page, which of course we were. So her confirming that shuts those people up, which is good. But as long as the girl doesn't care, and her, but there's 99% of girls are gonna like be severely mentally affected by that coming out. And people who release that do not think that. And whoever puts it up there, if God forbid that girl was in the majority and like did something to herself or like was depressed, like that's on the person who released it. And I fucking hope they know that. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Portnoy, any comment about tape three? <laughs> uh, I'm looking around here. Some people have little smiles on their face to what I'm sitting here. Uh, yeah, a little no, sweaty I, around the collar well, over there. Well, I mean, you, if you're asking me, am I happy about it? Obviously, I'm not. I mean, but he he's a big boy. I mean, it's, what it is, what it, I, I, you know, how would I'm any, 44 already. Well, I, I, well, it's funny. Some I, none of us, as I keep saying, none of us would be here the, without that. You know ad. something. Was, the best way, the best response I can give to that. Somebody had sent me something about it. I didn't even know that this came out. And I said, "Am I? Uh, I understand, you know, what's going on and whatnot. But as a, am I happy about it? As a parent, no. If it was someone else, I wouldn't. Couldn't care, care in the least. I mean." You know, things have happened. Look, you got started with that Brady thing with, the, you know, I never even understood why that was such a big issue. This is clearly different. But well, this is actually, it, 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 it's a tale as old as time. People are interested in this stuff, but it's really not a big, I mean, to me, it's, it's people are interested in that, but it, it, it's not a big deal. Like, now, correct me, maybe I misunderstood. That guy that was on with you back a couple months ago yeah. that was... Didn't he tell you that he yeah. had another? He did. He showed it. It was it was the one that came out. And so somebody tried to sell this. Was video he? In, to the my guy. question is: Was he involved in no. that coming? He so you not. can't like for that guy to be involved. The only way to monetize this is I have to give approval. 
Uh -huh. uh, to be like, yeah, here, go make money, which I would never do. I don't want them out. So the only reason these hit, hit the internet, somebody gets it and decides I'm going to be a jerk and either get at me, try to embarrass me. But what should be the more? You cannot embarrass me, but you, you could hurt the girl. That's, so it's like, what are you doing? But it wasn't him. He wasn't. No, no, no. There's no benefit to him. He can't make money on it. Where's a lot of people are talking about your house? Where's are you staying? In so, uh, I rented a house, house in Miami. And is it like uh, have you said that yet? It, it belonged to someone famous, right? Yeah, I don't want to say it because then people show up. Okay, okay, fair enough. I'm glad I asked in that manner. Then, uh, Club Sangria, how's that treating you? Love Sangria, favorite drink. Uh, Edelman retired. Talking some Patriots here, Mr. Portnoy. Right. I think uh, I don't. I tried to get him on the show. We did. I, what did I, he say? Well, I hit him because we had that, the timing of it when I'm like, I'm not great friends. He tweeted, what? We're not great friends. I tried to explain it, meaning like we are friends, but he's not somebody that like we're, we're bit, almost not everything, but most of what people have seen in our relationship has been on camera. There's not an off camera like, hey, how you doing? What are you thinking? He's not like, hey, I'm thinking of retiring, that type of stuff. Like I found out when everybody else. But I obviously texted him after and we, you know, he was like, thanks, and sent a nice text back to me. So we're good. I thought there was a chance he'd come on, but he was busy. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it actually makes me feel old, if anything. Because I, it's like him and Gronk are two guys that Barca was well, I've, has been around for their entire careers. And, and it's crazy to think that. You know, it's interesting with Edelman, I think just to look at the numbers, I didn't even realize this, some of the numbers don't add up to what some of the other uh, slot receivers, et cetera, you know, just the numbers. But I want to tell you something, as a Patriots fan, he's the go-to guy. I mean, uh, you know, he really was. When they, whenever there was a, a, a crucial moment, it always seemed to be either him or Gronkowski, one or the other. I mean, and this, Yeah, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Oh, I do if, too. If you if you if winning matters at all, he's a, yeah. a Hall of Famer, and and it's like I said, feeling. I still think of him as like a young player. It's crazy, because I saw him like I was there when Welker was there. He comes in, he's like the new kid. He was always kind of the like that's how I viewed yeah. it. He's definitely like my dad said. Him and Gronk, pre him, it was Troy Brown. Like those are the best receivers and like, always in the clutch. Yeah, Amazing 100%. in the clutch. You don't have Welker in there anywhere. I. No, I mean, Welker didn't win, so that's a huge, and a great player, but didn't win. Mm -hmm. I, I saw something that said Edelman graduated junior high, high school, college, played 12 years, and Brady was in the league the whole time. Did you see that? Yeah, that's what it feels that's like, yeah. That's crazy. What The text, was it like thanking you for like having his back? Or yeah, what? I, I sent him, I'm like, hell of a run. And he's like, thanks, like, I, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't overly personal, but it was a, it, like he took time to write something. He's like, and yeah, basically, I mean, right, you know, I'm sure we'll be seeing each other soon. Looking forward to catching up type deal. Now, was that like vindication for like having their back against Goodell and everything? Or was it kind of like, hey, like, you know, just doing your job? No, it's it. You know, he, he Barstool and the Patriots are as closely aligned as any sports team and media company. And he was there for, what, 11, 12 years of it. So, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he's been just any of those guys are, are very intertwined with our history. And then open invite, Julian, uh, if you want to come on next week, come next week, right? I'll come on with him. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> A four headed podcast. Uh, how'd the Guy Fury auction go? We raised 1.6 million, so good. All towards the Barstool Fund, or All how did Barstool that break down fund. work? Awesome. Yep. So, so what are we at right now? Close to 40 mil. Wow. That's great. Yep. And what what was it like? Uh, it I was think just kind of someone paid 70,000 to come meet me at our office and do like a pizza. Do you meal. know who? No. No. So you just they're just gonna tell you to fly back up one day and then you'll do it. Well, I mean, I I have some say on it. Maybe they'd rather come hang out in Miami. Who knows? I'm sure they would. Maybe. I'm sure. I'm sure they would. Uh, also, is the unboxing anniversary? It, it, what? I mean, was there any kind of auction? A lot of people have always asked, like, what happened to a lot of the items? Um, I think. I, I, I think we gave some away. I think somewhere in the old office. I know we went through a period where we were packaging them back up, 
in sending him to first responders. So I think it's a mishmash of stuff. There's a lot and of paintings don't want to I do think another of myself. One. What? I mean, we don't want to do another. There's no way to do one. What? It, you give the address away and it's, you know, the floodgates open. And that's why we're not saying where you're at right now. Correct. Because the floodgates would open. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's do some inside Barstool before we do, though, Dave. Let's talk about Viore. Yep. Uh, that's, Viore. The, that's the the comfortable stuff. Yep. You got it. Viore's great. It's a new perspective on performance apparel. Perfect to your sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I have some upstairs. Investment your happiness. You go to vioriclothing.com slash Dave, V-U-O-R-I, clothing.com slash Dave. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over 75 bucks. Free returns. Go to vioricom slash Dave. Discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Again, V-U-O-R-I, clothing.com slash Dave. Super versatile, super comfortable, running, training, lounging, going out. You can do it all. There you go, fioriclothing.com slash Dave. Uh, first thing, inside Barstool, Frank the Tank got charged for uh, TV in the hospital. It's a crazy thing to charge. Very funny rant. And I, I think I tweeted like every once in a while, you just, you know, you run into the wrong guy at the wrong time, like that hospital. Uh, but yeah, that is a crazy thing to charge for using the TV. <laughs> and I, I like that he pinpointed that he's mad because they charged him because they didn't have the channels. That yeah, he they wanted. didn't have a ton of channels. <laughs> but if they, I, something tells me, Dave, if it had 2,000 channels, he still would have been a little upset that they charged Seems him. Seems like you TV. should be allowed to use the TV in the hospital uniformly. Yes, yes. So, uh, I don't very know, you're, funny. You get a quick pay, uh, Frank the Tank, 47 well, bucks. Well, they're not the going to get that $47 out of Frank. <laughs> that, 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 this may go to the highest court in the land before they get that. He's laughing, but it could be, uh, this could be his next case. <laughs> yes. be look, looking forward to that. Um, did you see Stu? He celebrated Mulch Day. Do you? How in tune are you with Stu? What Stu? I saw doing? that video. I didn't know he's a mulch guy. I saw it. Very Stu Finer. <laughs> like just it's, screaming about the mulch. I did see it. Funny. Mulch Day. The pool's open. He's in a list of people he wants to join him in his pool. Would you ever join him in his pool, Dave? Never. <laughs> no. There's a quote you like to say: "Would rather die. Would you rather die than join Stu Finer?" No, I won't go that far. But like okay. Stu during Sports Advisors is enough Stu for me for the year. <laughs> uh, B.W. Carlin is leaving Barstool. Yeah. Uh, it Anything sounds like a good opportunity. So I mean, I was never overly close to him. It's weird. He tweet. I saw him tweet like what a dream job it was. And then, like, two minutes later, I heard he was gone. But I didn't interact with him. Paul and Erica spoke highly of him. I'm not sure if he's still doing some freelancing with us. Uh, but good for B.W. Carlin. Good for B.W. Carlin's right. Best wishes. Rico fights. There's a little little, little tiff there. Rico's got uh, he's zeroed in on a new enemy. He never really liked Feidelberg, but now he's Oh, I didn't know really, that. Uh, yeah, and they had him on the rundown. Marty Mush tried to put him on speakerphone to explain to Feidelberg why he didn't like him. Hung up instantly. <laughs> so, so crazy, uh, we'll is crazy. See. Yeah, we'll see. Rico, actually, we play Feidelberg, Cons, and uh, Casey in trivia. Myself and Clem. Rico's our third teammate. Uh, he opted out. So Clem and I, we got to play shorthanded. Uh, I think Jeff might give us a random partner. I don't know who it is yet, but uh, it's going to be interesting. Because he didn't want to go against Cons. Yeah. He is a crazy, crazy person. Uh, did you see Steve Che, uh, G Giovanni Bernard? I saw that. <laughs> yep, his video. See, I'm, uh, I'm more on top than you think. You are. I'm, surpri I'm, I'm surprised. You're, 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 you're making your rounds in Miami right now. I saw it. <laughs> um, former employee was sued for $500,000. Did you that see I didn't that? see. Oh, uh, yeah, former... Uh, Former employer, former catcher, was sued by Joe West, MLB umpire. Oh, that happened a while ago. Yeah, I guess it actually went through, though. Oh. Yeah, 500K. Wait, so let me see that again. Awarded? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? 
I guess they narrowed it down, and they found out that Joe West had never. Um, and I, I allegedly, well, I don't know. What did he accuse him of? So he said that he, uh, Billy Wagner, when he caught Billy Wagner, he had a deal with Joe West, and he, he, Billy Wagner bought him a car, and he shrunk the strike zone for Billy Wagner, and uh, it turns out Laduca Wagner and um, Joe West never were at the same time in the same game. From what I know of it. Like and and why, why is he getting 500 grand? Uh, slander, is that right? When it's said? Action Network's How can involved. That I don't know. Def- no member of the committee has told the plaintiff that Laduca's state order would not affect his chances for election to the Hall of Fame? Jeez Louise, that is crazy. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Very crazy. That's nuts. And then my last thing, before we do some emails, uh, it sounds like Arizona gambling went yep. through. Good. Is that good. targeted? Any state, any state that gets approved is good for us. And are we still on for uh, for Jersey and Indy next? I think what's, Indy what's, is next. Jersey's Indy's maybe next? pushed back slightly. Okay, cool. So Indy within the next month or two? Yes, definitely. There you go. All right, awesome. Let's do some emails, and then we can get out of here. All right. Uh, first, one's, first one's from Ben. Uh, how does it work for content people who have their own YouTube? It's supposed to be on the bar stool. Sometimes we do allow others, but it's supposed to be – depends when you're hired, how big your account is. There's a variety of factors, but we try to aggregate it on the bar stool main channel. Because a lot of people do have their own personal one, right? That's what – Maybe. Uh, next one's from Matthew. Uh, can you give any backstory behind the Andy Roddick video you shot with Big Cat? Not really. He was presented to us uh, to do a video with. We used to try to get celebrities to do videos. Um, I think Fox at the time, we were supposed to do three videos out there. That was the only one that happened, and it was to promote their show or whatever. So it, he was offered, hey, you guys want to play tennis with Andy Roddick? And that's what we did. And are you, are you like Roddick? Was there a relationship there? No, for him not afterwards? previously. He's a nice guy, super nice guy, but there was nothing previous. We had never met or spoke. Haven't talked to him since? No. No. Um, okay, so sponsored thing, kind of, back of the day. Well, it was sponsored like Fox, is like we wanted day. eyes on our people on our Fox show, so let's make videos that'll get traction. And as part of it, you say, hey, watch Andy Roddick on this show. I forget what it was. All right, then. Uh, That's it for today, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week. We'll see you then.